geographer, and I'm deeply concerned about how online social media like Facebook, Twitter, Wikipedia, and Yelp are changing our views of the world around us. Each of these forms of social media creates content that is ranked and filtered in a way that narrows our worldview. I'm here tonight to talk to you about how this filtering changes our perception of the places around us based on who's contributing the data and where the data is located. Each of these forms of social media creates a geotag, a small bit of data that's associated with a location on the Earth's surface. And each time we, say, update our Facebook profile to include a location, maybe check in at a restaurant on, on Yelp, or read a Wikipedia article that includes a historical event or a description of a place, each time we do that, we interact with this layer of spatial data that covers the Earth's surface. Unfortunately, this layer of data is not evenly distributed. It's quite clumpy in some places. You can see the map behind me is a special type of map called a cartogram, where the size of each square represents how many geotagged articles are in that country. But on the map behind me, you might also notice that there's extreme inequalities in the distribution of this information, that almost 70%, or 70, almost 3 quarters of the world's content originates in the United States and Europe alone. So you have to wonder how useful is an encyclopedia that claims to be the sum of all world knowledge, when all of the knowledge in the entire continent of South America, the entire continent of Africa, sums up to be less than the amount of knowledge in France. Google suffers from the same inequalities. Again, almost 70% of all of the world's geo-referenced information comes from two countries alone. United States and Germany. So you have to wonder what type of worldview are we seeing when we use Google to learn about the world around us. Flickr is the largest repository of geotagged images in the world. We use Flickr to understand and visualize other places in the world. But Flickr similarly suffers from the same problem, where on the map behind me you might notice that China, Iran, and the Nigerian Delta, heavily populated places are absent from the map. They're absent largely because of censorship, internal competing platforms, and the digital divide. That means people are not accessing and contributing information in the same way. So if Google is trying to build a virtual mirror of the world at all times through their locational services, we have to wonder what is reflected in this mirror that Google is showing us. We have to wonder whose worldview and whose perceptions are we seeing. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. When this happened, this was the first time we were able to see how the digital inequalities online are replicating the material inequalities that exist within our society. We were able to see that in the Lower Ninth Ward, the poorest and least white part of the city, which was severely damaged by the storm, had very few geotags documenting the damage, the devastation, and the displacement of the people who lived there. We were not able to see the same amount of information about this area that we were about its wealthier and whiter counterparts in the city. As our maps become mobile and integrate with the smart and social functions of our cell phones, these problems do not disappear. In fact, they're exacerbated. They're exacerbated by our social networks, by our social media, and by our maps surrounding us and, and identifying our location at all times. So as Google requests that volunteers enrich the map and you all contribute your own local knowledge and the places that matter to you to the map, we aren't doing that so much. Women, I've noticed, will tag the social relationships on their Facebook. They will identify friends in, in pictures or in status updates, but they will not geotag images. They will not geotag locations that they visited as they're con more concerned about privacy. When this relates to the map, we can start to realize who updates the map with their local knowledge and contributes their information. The map creators that volunteer information are 93% men. The regional expert reviewers who stand in as the gatekeepers of local knowledge and review those changes to the map made by the volunteer editors, those reviewers are 96% male. So we have to wonder whose perspective is it that we're seeing on the map? And whose perspective? is virtually missing. 
So Google's proprietary search algorithm is always changing. In 2011, Google introduced their social search function. So no longer is it just your personal click history and your location that changes where what appears through their ranking and filtering. Now it's your social contacts, those contacts that Google can identify through your email, your Gchat, your online social networks. Now Google's using those to determine the ranking and filtering of your results. To test how this plays out on the map, I asked my conservative friend Eric, a retired, retired colonel commander in the US Navy, what does freedom look like on your map? So when Eric did a search for freedom, he was able to see a cleaning service. He was able to see a church and a healthcare clinic. On my map, freedom meant freedom from hunger, freedom from human trafficking, and the free Freedom and Peace Party. When I asked Eric, what does humble look like on your map? He looked at it and he said, there's a church, there's an investment opportunity. When on my map, humble implied my employer, Humboldt State University, and implied uh, I might be interested in several social services in the area. Our maps were different based on our worldview. So as we know from Eli Parser's filter bubble, there are certain risks associated with this automatic filtering and ranking of your results that it leads to a sort of auto-propaganda where you only see what people who are demographically like you, where your own position in the world takes you. My fear, though, is as this travels into our digital maps, that what we will see is only the places that we go, the places where our friends go, where the pe people who are like us visit. And my fear is that that will lead us to not going and exploring new places. So my fear about maps relates to the spatial personalization algorithms that we are using every day to limit where we go. My fear is that we will also uh, not consider who's contributing to the map and whose worldview is being left out. I'm worried about this virtual mirror that Google is reflecting back at us, and I'm frightened that perhaps we don't like the reflection of our community that we see in this map. I'm frightened that this mirror is not showing us the plural view of our society. So thank you very much. <laughs>